Good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode 6 of Advisor Lodge. I'm your host, Edward, and... And I'm Roger here. Yes, we are back from uh, IFA Studio as well. So today, we have good topic and it's about fixed income or bonds. Today, we have someone special from our own UOB Asset Management Asia Fixed Income Team. Uh, he's no other than a fixed income specialist, a credit analyst, and also a co-PM for some of our fixed income funds. Uh, he's actually no other than Michael. So, uh, Michael, welcome to our podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me here. I do apologize for my voice. Just <laughs> recovering from a bit of flu, but still happy to be here. And it's okay. It sounds sexy. It's okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, I think like what I mentioned in the introduction, right, Michael, uh, fixed income, this is actually your forte, right? Uh, but, even though it's your forte, but when we look at the general investors, I think a lot of the investors are more familiar with stocks, correct? So, but less familiar with bond investing. Probably maybe now a little bit better because of the T-bills, right? Uh, but can you share, right? What are the bonds type available and why investors should be considering, you know, adding bonds to their portfolio, especially for this year, right? Yeah, yep. sure. I mean, um, actually the bond universe is not that, uh, different from uh, stocks because oh. you know how stocks you actually segregate it into S and P five hundred, the US and all that. Correct. Bonds we also do segregate it by geography, but what we do have is what we know as uh, investment grade and high yield. That is how we categorize it. For investment grade, I think you will know that it's more of the stable companies, the big companies mm. like you know Intel, you mm. got Apple, mm. you got Microsoft. Mm. Those are the kinds of companies that are more stable, and those are investment grade. For high yield, you have those that are coming from emerging markets, coming from like places like India, Mongolia. So stuff like you know, uh, what came out like the Adanis, mm. and then you have the Green Coast. Those tend to be the high yield. And as the name suggests, they ha do have a bit more of a higher return profile relative to the investment grade. Another thing to note is, like what you mentioned earlier, with all the T-bills, we have this concept of duration, how long the bond actually is. Yeah, yeah. And then it's sensitive to, to interest rates. So we do have the shorter um, duration bonds, like all the T-bills and all that. And also we do have corporate issuance that come out from there. And those tend to be on the shorter end. And why we look at duration? Because, you know, investing is such a long road. Mm. When you try to actually project and predict something far away is harder. Shorter term is easier. So for the nearer term, we do see more of the high yield issuers coming out because it is actually easier to predict. And then we do have longer duration and that's where we see more of the bigger, more stable companies actually coming out. But when you have such a long term and like what we've seen in the past few years, when interest rates actually fluctuate a lot, you then get a lot of whip source along the period. Right. And then the final thing to note is that Bonds do have some um, interesting add-ons. Mm. So you have, can have an option embedded inside, such as a convertible bond. So like the name suggests, you have this bond where you actually still get interest. But one fine day, you feel like, you know, wow, the stock price is actually doing a lot better than bond. I want to actually convert it into equity. So that's one particular component. Another one we have is a perpetual. Because most of the time, like what we see for the T-bills, MAS bills, there's actually a fixed maturity date. Mm. For perpetuals, this goes on forever or as long as the company is still alive. And then one fine day, they can decide to actually call it back and that's when they do the pay full payout for the principal. I see. Th thanks a lot, Michael, for the explanation. I guess to put it into layman context terms, your investment grade probably will be there. Uh, from a stock's perspective, it's like a blue chip. Yeah. And, and from a high yield perspective, that will likely be your penny stocks which everybody is very keen on, especially. And, and that's where you see the highest return. But then again, they always look over, <laughs> overlook the, the risk part of things. That's why I think you mentioned about that. And, and, and I think the interesting part on the convertible bonds, uh, not to be uh, confused with all your cars, which are all the convertible cars. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, you know, as you are driving and then you feel like feel to having a win and all that, but probably not in Singapore context, but uh, you like to switch on and, yeah, you know, yeah take off the roof and all that, that's where you convert the bond into an yeah. equity. So, yeah, I, I think that that, that probably that make it a little bit more relatable to to, to, you, to the listeners today as well. Yeah, and, and probably, yeah. It's a very good, like a crash course. Crash course. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, I correct. could actually just listen again and to really just understand the basic of uh, bonds. Yeah, right? but also just to touch upon why Edward also asked, why should we also have bonds yeah. in, in our portfolio, right? 
because I think like what uh, Roger mentioned, we have all these penny stocks, we have right, all these blue right. chip. <laughs> and then when we see what happens in the past few years, wow, the market can go up and then the next day it goes down. Very volatile, a lot of swings. Yes. For bonds, it's actually lower volatility. It doesn't swing as much. And so that actually helps to give a, more, a bit more stability to your portfolio as you add it in. A second component is that bonds has this uh, interest coming from coupons. Mm. So there's actually fixed payout dates. Maybe every six months, you get a bit of an interest coming from your bonds. So you do also have this income component, which is slightly different from dividends because dividends is actually up to the company to decide. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Because I think the perspective of the asset class is also different. Bonds yeah. are basically debts, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct. So I think uh, that's where the difference between uh, bonds and uh, equities mm. uh, comes yeah. about. Right? Yeah. And I think bonds, you know, uh, again, the probably the, the listeners will be keen to know it's more of an IOU. Mm. So as I lend money to you, Michael, I expect certain interest uh, and, and and to to be paid back to me, because you know, uh, and and I'm the risk, you know, whether I'm going to pay you back, yeah. or, or rather you are the risk. <laughs> I, whether you're going to pay me back the money, that's something that I need to have a trust in you. Yeah. And hence, I I will expect some interest from you, and and if I know that mm, I've known Michael for a long time, probably he will pay me back the money. So so probably I'm, I can ac- accept a lower risk. Correct. But if yeah. I just come across Michael as someone that oh probably uh, I, I know him through as a friend of a friend, then, oh no, I'm going to demand a lot more interest because by collecting the interest is the way I'm also trying to collect back my, my capital to a certain extent as well. Yes. So yeah, yeah I think that that's, that's how we, we probably So I would say this well. is where your credit rating come in, correct? Yep. Yes, yes, correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so we are breaking down in a very layman term for everyone to basically just understand, right? Because, yeah. you know, if you know him well, you know his credibility, then you are a triple A, right? But if like, oh, this guy is, uh, I don't really know him well. Yeah, uh, don't a friend really, of friend. Yeah, a friend of friend. A probably the credit rating friend, yeah. goes to C, right? <laughs> yeah, so correct. somewhere along those kind of explanation where credit rating comes in, where the credibility comes in, you know, and all the, um, what Roger has put it into a very layman term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the other, I mean, as we, since we're on the topic of bonds, right, and mm. talking about investing, the, the, the characteristics of a bond, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we can't really run away from the, the hottest topic right now in terms of the finance world, which is about interest rates as well. Yes. I think this has been hogging both the finance news and also as the mainstream news as well. Everybody's eyes is on uh, the Federal Reserve, or in short, the Fed. Mm. And, and, and it seems like the, the odds are coming down. Uh, I wouldn't bet against it, to be honest. Uh, and, and it seems like the interest rates are likely to fall this year. Uh, regardless of whether it's how, how much we are now in the topic to discuss how much is the, the, the cut will be. But the overall context is that it seems like the rates are going to fall this year. So if you are investing into bonds, uh, is that good or bad? So I think we need to look at it in a bit of a unique context because okay. in the past 10 years, mm. interest rates have not been this high. True. And I'll admit, uh, this is the first time I've seen it in my whole life. Although, same I, as me. <laughs> so I can't say it for other audiences. Who this is like age revealing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not what? to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Roger experienced it. Oh well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when we look at it in perspective, it's quite high. When we look at it, 4%. Yeah. When in the past, we're looking at what, 2%? Mm. So, um, this in terms of the uh, all ti- all time yield is an all time high, yep. and it is a good opportunity to actually try to capture on this interest rate environment while we still can. Well, like what we said, um, who knows when the interest rates will actually fully cut? Right now, we do have some expectations being priced into the market, but whether it really materialize, time will only will tell us that. But it's now a good time to actually jump in, capture a bit of this uh attractive yield while it's still p- present. And then after that, we can ride it out from there. Yeah, so probably like lock in the yields. Yeah. Because what I do understand is also that bonds and basically interest rate, they are the bond prices and interest rate, they move in inverse mm. direction yeah. as well, right? So once yields start to come down, probably bond prices are actually going to go, go up. Right, so you enjoy the capital appreciation at that site, right? So I think uh, these are some of the reasons that, you know, um, basically you can actually uh, have bonds in your portfolios, right? And I think uh, it's also to, good to capture the rates because if you know that the rates are going to come down, then you should actually act it. I think it's quite apparent that it is going to come down. Right? In the past two weeks, we did experience some kind of um, rates coming down in the US uh, treasuries as well, right? I think in the two years, three years, we kind of see it. So, yeah. So, I think now is a very good time 
to uh, actually really look into it, right? Uh, but of course, uh, rates coming down. So one thing is good: your mortgage rates also come down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you on a pack? Are you on a fixed mature? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're rate. on a fixed rate or variable rate? Uh, better thing of refinancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, okay, that, that's basically about, you know, interest rate likely to fall this year. I think our house view is two cuts, if yeah. I'm wrong. Yes. About two to three cuts. Yes, 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 yes. So, correct, correct. So, in your perspective, right, for bonds, what do you think is the most attractive bond type right now? Well, because you, you yeah. talk about so many different kind of bonds, but where are we looking at to find the sweet spot? in terms of risk and reward as well. Yeah. So before I get really into the meat and potatoes, I think uh, in bonds, we also have this concept of spread. Mm. Mm. So that uh, links a bit to what Roger mentioned. You know, right. How much do I trust the company? Mm. So yep. if I don't trust the company, I want a higher, higher, higher interest rate. Mm. And part of that interest rate comes in the form of spread. Mm. So a higher spread means that I trust you less. Ah. Right. So what's been happening in the past uh, one year is that spreads have actually come down, okay. tightened a lot. Mm. A lot of people are actually buying up bonds mm. because there's a lot of expectation like what uh, Edward, you already mentioned. There's expectation on uh, rates coming down, people want to lock it in. So it's actually tightened a lot. So when we look at the investment grade, spreads have actually come and tightened quite a bit. Mm. Um, for the high yield, that has also gone uh, in the same trend. But uh, we do see that there's a bit more of a uh, potential for further spread compression in the high yield, given that it actually came from a higher base mm. previously. Because um, for high yield, it's more sensitive to the uh, economic cycle. Right. So the past few years has been bettering the market quite a bit. So it actually widened out quite a bit previously. So mm. now with this expectation, it's starting to come down. So in terms of preference, we do have a bit more of a preference for high yield. But that being said, um, one thing to also highlight that you should always do your own research and you should always be uh, fully aware and understanding of what you're buying. So naturally, it's not just a blindfold, buy any form of high yield because there are times when there's a reason why a bond is actually uh, trading at such a high yield because the risk and the danger is actually present. So um, ultimately, we are still doing a lot of uh, fundamental um, analysis, looking at the company, seeing which one we are comfortable with. But we do still see that there's some room uh, in the high yield space. Correct. I see. So, so, so that I think that's the most important point yes. for Michael today. That's the disclaimer for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so that, and, please and do your own why work. Also, you should let the experts do the job. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's he the would, expert. He's the correct. credit so analyst. So he will really do the <laughs> credit analysis on <clears throat> bonds, and then you know you can basically buy into a bond fund where the expert just do all the works, and you can get the benefits out of it. <laughs> and I think, and I think the the other way to put it around, uh, from in terms of what we call a spread compression, mm. it's also more of uh, that people are demanding more for the bonds, mm. and that also acts up on it, and that's why you know the the spreads are coming down because people are demanding for it, they are pushing the the yields lower and lower as well. So so that that's that's another way to to put it uh, into perspective as well, and 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 with that right. So as you mentioned about the preference towards the high yield side of yeah. things. So what are some of the things that you know investors should take note of? Uh, I mean, you mentioned quite a fair bit in terms of the risk, do your own duty. So as a listener out there, then you know I really want to do my own homework, although I trust the experts, but somehow you know my, my hands are itchy. Uh, I decided to go and do some own homework as well. So what are the key things that you know uh, clients should be looking out for when, when they are looking for, for high yield bonds? Okay, mm. I think first <coughs> it comes back to what I mentioned earlier, duration. Very because important. Yes. like high yield, you, you do get a bit more fearful mm. and you it naturally tends to be a shorter duration. So I think investors need to also be aware that when you're buying the high yield, there's a tendency for this duration and whether it matches what you're looking out for. Secondly is, a bit like what I mentioned, uh, do a bit of your homework. Why is the fund holding that particular bond? Mm. Is there a reason for it? Mm. Is it because it's trying to match a benchmark that's out there? Mm. Or is it because they do see a pricing opportunity? Right, 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 right. Okay. And I think the the uh, again just not to be confused about the duration. It's not about how long you hold, or how much, or how long you should be staying invested into. A, let's say a bond fund. Or we all know that you know, anytime you want to sell from the bond fund, please carry on. <laughs> <But> <laughs> there's no restriction. I mean, of course, you must make sure there's daily liquidity. But this is more of the, uh, we call it sensitivity. Uh, to in terms rate. of to interest rates yeah. uh, increases. So so that what Michael is referring to is really more on the the duration of it. So. Uh, here at UBUAM, I think we advocate uh, the shorter it is, the, the, the better it is because it's less sensitive 
to the to the interest rate uh, increase. And now, of course, we all talk about interest rate going down, right? Uh, you know, who who will bet against that? And you say hey, maybe you know interest rate might go up. So that 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 is the the least likelihood of of that happening as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's correct. So I think basically these are what investors should you know take note because. Like what you say, it's always good to do a little bit of yeah, homework, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it gives you that knowledge behind the different types of bonds as well. But if uh, investors were to, you know, basically split their portfolio, right, between IG and 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 high yield, what do you think? How do you, sh- how or in your perspective, how do you? Sh- you are the chef uh, now. Yeah. I, how will you go I'll, about doing it? I would yeah, like yeah. to give. I would like to be able to give like a 60, 40 sort of answer, but <laughs> ultimately, like what you say, chef. So for this, it becomes a bit like an omakase. Oh. Really suit to yourself. Right. It's, it's a very personal choice. Mm. So some things to actually look out for is, what's your target yield? What do you really want out of it? Right. Do you want a higher yield? If you do, then maybe you might have a higher proportion in high yield. Mm. Are you looking for that for income or do you want it more for stability? Correct. If you need more stability, then naturally you're gearing more towards the IG side or investment grade side to get more or less of that volatility to actually stabilize your whole portfolio. So um, for investors, you are now also the chef with mm. some of this knowledge. So you also get to actually choose and decide and pick and match. Correct. So I think um, a lot of also times it does matter your own risk appetite. Right, you could be actually placing, you know, like what you say, if you are somewhat a little bit more on the not so adventurous type, I would say so, right? You have some in T bills, you probably have some in investment grade, and then you have some in high yield. Because high yield, even though it's a fixed income product, the volatility can be like of an equity, yeah. I would say so, right? right? So, yeah, so I think this episode really just kind of break down what is investment grade, uh, basically uh, also what is uh, high yield, where we see actually opportunity uh, in the space as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, that's quite a nice way to, to talk about as well in terms of, I think it relates back to the risk appetite. Mm. So so for all the listeners, it's really more of what do you want to eat? Are you more of a risk taker? You want to take a little bit more spicy uh, taste to it or and maybe add some mala to it as well that's where the high yield comes in <laughs> or you're a little bit more conservative you know you want to take more soup base a yeah. little bit more chill yeah. like, like myself probably yeah so <laughs> yeah, so, so it's really more about the risk appetite of it and, and whether how, 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 do you, how do you want to go about doing so Yeah. and, and I think the key point is also about the, what you're looking for ultimately and, and how this portfolio could suit your, uh, your your overall portfolio. Mm. Uh, we should not look at it just on the, the fixed income side of things, but we should look at it on the entirety of it as well. Yeah. So yeah, thanks, uh, Michael, for for all the insights here today as well. Yep. Yep. So, uh, at UBAM, uh, please step up your investment through our fixed income suite of uh, solutions. So we have from whatever risk appetite that you are on, whether on the investment grade or if not to the high yield. Yeah, it's a good time to basically step up your investment with our fixed income solutions. So signing off, I'm your host, Edward. And I'm Roger as well. And we have Michael here today as well. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, so we will see you again soon.